Naka-unmute na ba, Mark? Hello? Mic test?
Okay, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those who are with us uh, online in this uh, first of uh, first webinar series on um, as part of the as part of our Indigenous Peoples Month celebration. We will be starting in one minute. Okay, start this webinar uh, for today. Let us um, have our national anthem fo followed by the Cordillera hymn and prayer by uh, Mr. Gary Dongaya of NCIP CAR. Your glory, one, we 
Amami tawaton ni iat cumpik sa laing ang siyani Anak nui awat sinahili sinun sinun kawanan Tatakui man susunutan ni Amami siyan mampakawan tapasul ni Siya kon ba mampakawanin Tanjan susunut ni nakafasuran siya ni Amami ay apiksaan Apo ni dyan ng atyan At chomrosan na ning kapag Saya tantawan at yun ni Mga totan susunut ni Anang chawat ni siya namani Apo ni dyan bingatan no Ay chay chay ako ni Ama mi Ama ay puni dyan In ka pan-pantajan Ija chayum tan dyan ay madin In ka mahililan tachum nan lagsak na piksa Chabaton ni kasin nan laing biyad at chum Tasi dya ko na chum ni tan dyan ay susunod ni Anago ng kochabon ni ama ni apu ni jan a a a a men. Thank you, Mr. Donggayao, for that wonderful indigenous prayer. So good morning, po, sa ating lahat, and live and alive, we're here at the RDC Hall. With of course our first speaker of uh, this webinar series, Dr. R. R. Rovillos, uh, the Chancellor of UP Baguio. So, for the welcome remarks, may we have Director Manuel Haramilia, the Chairperson for the Committee on Indigenous Peoples' Concerns and Regional Director of NCIP CAR. So while waiting, um, uh, may we just first acknowledge our participants in today's uh, webinar. So Sir RR, ngayong the first webinar, no? we have uh, registered at least 300 participants via Zoom. Zoom lang po yun, wala pa yung Facebook and wow. um, the YouTube. So for the attendees, confirmed attendees who are with us through online this morning, we have Abra State Institute of Science and Technology, Baguio City National, High, Baguio City National Science High School, Baguio General Hospital and Medical Center, Baguio Water District, Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Benguet State University, Bifar Car, Center for Development Programs in the Cordillera, Cooperative Development Authority, Car, Cordillera Study Center of UP Baguio, Crystal Cave Elementary School, the Department of Agriculture, Philippine Fiber Industry Development Authority, Department of Science and Technology, Department of Agriculture, Department of Budget and Management, Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Justice Region 1, Department of Public Works and Highways, DepEd Baguio, Deped Car, Deped Kalinga, Department of Trade and Industry, Ifugao, DFA, uh, CO Baguio, Dilag Integrated School, 
DILG CAR, DITENG, DOH CHD CAR, DOST ABRA, DOST CAR, PSTC MP, DOST Mountain Province, DOT CAR, DSWD CAR, DTI Baguio Benguet, Easter College, EMB CAR, FPOP, Gohang National High School, Ifugao State University, the iPad School, Kalinga National High School, uh, yeah, Kalinga State University, LGU Aguinaldo Ifugao, LGU Asipolo, LGU Baay Likwan Abra, LGU Connor Apayao, LGU Man Abra, LG, LGU Lagangilang Abra, LGU Manabo in Abra, LGU Mangkayan in Benguet, LGU Mayuyao Ipugao, LGU Pasil Kalinga, LGU Sagada Mountain Province, LGU Santa Marcela Apayao, the LRA, MGB Car, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National Commission on Indigenous Peoples Car, National Housing Authority, National Intelligence Coordinating Agency, National Meat Inspection Service Car, National Youth Commission, NCIP Apayao, NCIP uh, Luna CS, CSC, NCIP Benguet, NCIP Itogon, CSC Benguet, NCIP Apayao. Of course, NEDA, our host of uh, today's um, webinar, Nueva, the Nueva Vizcaya People's Museum and Library, Office of Civil Defense Cordillera, Office of the Provincial Prosecutor, Binget. Uh, and of course, we have uh, organizations also with us online, participating online, the Parent Teachers Association, the Pro Parole and Probation Administration, PEACE, PESA, PESA, PESA BCEZ, PESA EHSD, Philippine Export Zone Authority, Baguio, Philippine Information Agency, PPA CAR, Presidential Management Staff, Professional Regulation Commission, PSA RSSO CAR, St. Louis University, SDO Baguio City, Securities and Exchange Commission, Baguio Extension Office, Tabtaba, University of the Philippines Baguio, and University of the Philippines Los Baños. So yun po yung registered participants natin this morning. Uh, wala pa po dyan yung, of course, we are live on Facebook and YouTube. So there are more participants po with us this, in this morning's webinar. Okay, so um, we, may we now have the welcome remarks by uh, NCIP Regional Director, Director Mani Haramilia. People's concern to all directors for on board in this webinar. To our speaker for today, the Chancellor of uh, UP, Dr. Raymond uh, D. Revillos, and of course to the Vice Chair of the Committee, Mr. Ryan Mangusan, who will moderate this uh, webinar. To all of you, a pleasant morning. The month Happy IP Month celebration to one and all. To all the members of the Committee on Indigenous Peoples Concern, to all directors who are on board in this webinar, to our speaker for today, the Chancellor of uh, UP, Dr. Raymond uh, D. 
Revillos, and of course to the Vice Chair of the Committee, Mr. Ryan Mangusan, who will moderate this uh, webinar. To all of you, a pleasant morning. The month of October, perhaps, is the most uh, celebrated month in the lives of the indigenous peoples of the Philippines. It is regarded that the case of Carino versus Insular Government is a landmark case in which the highest court of the land recognized the rights of the indigenous peoples to their ancestral domains or ancestral lands by recognizing the concept of native land or native title hence the month of October is equally celebrated by the indigenous peoples in the Philippines. It is the month that the landmark legislation was finally signed by the President of the, of the Republic of the Philippines, the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act of 1997 or RA 8371. This law was regarded as the first of its kind worldwide. This month of October marks the 23rd year of the birth of Ipra. Despite its 23rd year, however, still these historical injustices which Ipra seeks to correct remains. Does this year's theme of correcting historical injustice to the indigenous, to the indigenous peoples is very timely. IPRA was enacted by Congress to supposedly address the centuries old neglect to the indigenous peoples. To re echo the sponsorship speech of the then Senator Juan Flavier, and I quote, the indigenous cultural communities, including the Banasamoro, have long suffered from the dominance and neglect of government controlled by the majority. Massive migration of their Christian brothers to their homeland shrunk their territory and many of the tribal Filipinos were pushed to the hinterlands. Resisting the intrusion, dispossessed of their ancestral land and with the massive exploitation of their natural resources by the elite among the migrant population, they became marginalized. And the government has been an, an indispensable party to this insidious conspiracy against the indigenous cultural communities. It organized and supported the, res the resettlement of people to their ancestral land, which was massive during the Commonwealth and early years of the Philippine Republic. Pursuant to the Regalian Doctrine, first introduced to our system by Spain through the Royal Decree of 13 February 1894, or the Maura Law, the government passed laws to legitimize the wholesale land, to legitimize the wholesale land grabbing and provide for easy titling or grant of lands to migrant homesteaders within the traditional areas of the ICCs. He further declared that the IPs are the offspring and heirs of the peoples who have first inhabited and cared for the land long before any central government was established. Their ancestors had territories over which they rolled themselves and related with other tribes. These territories, the land, include people, their dwelling, the mountains, the water, the air, plants, forests, and the animals. This is their environment in its totality. Their existence as indigenous peoples is manifested in their own lives through political economic, socio-cultural, and spiritual practices. 
The indigenous people's culture is the living and irrefutable proof to this. Their survival depends on the securing or acquiring land rights, asserting their rights to it and depending on it. Otherwise, indigenous peoples shall cease to exist as distinct peoples. For her part, Representative Andulana's sponsorship speech declared that this representation as early as in the 8th Congress filed a bill of similar implications that would promote, recognize the rights of indigenous cultural communities within the framework of national unity and development. Apart from this, it is our obligation, the government's obligation to assure and ascertain that these rights shall be well preserved and the cultural traditions as well as the indigenous laws that remained long before this republic was established shall be preserved and promoted. There is a need to look into these matters seriously and early approval of the substitute bill shall bring into reality the aspirations, the hope and dreams of more than 12 million Filipinos that they be considered in the mainstream of the Philippine society as we fashion for the year 2000." End quote. Despite RA 8371, several issues concerning indigenous peoples are being consistently raised before the Regional Development Council through the Committee on Indigenous Peoples Concern. These issues to include misappropriation of Cordillera attire, indigenous intellectual property, misinformation regarding Egorots in basic educational textbooks, and other cultural misappropriations and or misrepresentations. The latest of which is the use of the different ethno-linguistic groups to name a sleeper brand. The theme for this year's celebration, correcting historical injustices for, the, for indigenous people's rights and welfare, is very timely. Even with the passage of IPRA, injustices against our IPs are still imminent. One of the many issues that needs proper discourse, especially here in the Cordillera, is the appropriate median of usage of IKS peace, particularly on the wearing of attires. This has been the long debate between and among the IP and non-IP stakeholders of CAR. Our IKS peace plays an integral role on our indent. Taken out of context and without a united view of the same may lead to an imminent cultural ethnocide. How we view our IKEA peace today determines the kind of mindset our next generation of IPs will be upholding as the future administrators of the Cordillera administrative region. In line with the 23rd year of IPRA celebration, RDC, through the Committee on Indigenous Peoples Concern, is sponsoring this series of webinars to serve as a forum to generate inputs for policy recommendations to better address these issues. These issues being tackled during this series of webinars are very timely, especially with ongoing advocacy for the region's quest for self-determination through the establishment of the autonomous region of the Cordillera. With this series of seminars, we hope to contextualize cultural misappropriations and or misrepresentations that despite the dynamic nature of our culture in the innovations we have adopted through generations, we will be able to preserve our cultures and traditions. It is with fervent hope that through this series of webinars, through the help of the different government agencies, we can be able to generate policy recommendations to further development, preservation, and protection of our cultures. 
In this webinar ser series, topics are divide divided into four. One, contextualized or cultural misrepresentation. Second, cultural appropriation. Third, differences of cultural preservation and innovation. And lastly, examine policies cover development and protection of culture. The Committee on Indigenous Peoples Concerned Technical Working Group was able to summon credible resource speakers from all corners of the region. We likewise open this webinar to all those who are interested. So with this earnest thoughts and pieces of advice, I wish you all the best in achieving the objectives of this webinar. We encourage our participants not to hold back on their questions and comments. Let's make this webinar series an interactive one. Let our questions and comments, the heat of colliding ideas, fund the embers of the true spirit of IPRA. Thank you and may the spirit of gra and grace of Kabunyan be with us all. God bless to one and all. Mabuhay ang Cordillera ag biyag dagit indigenous peoples. All, greeting all teachers a happy Teachers' Day. Happy Teachers' Day, Sir RR. Uh, ongoing program po nila sa Deputy Car ngayon. So I hope, uh, and there are others naman po na who is joining us online, the, the teachers from uh, the different provinces. Okay, so, manan na imbag nga agsapa kada tayo amin. I am Ryan Dale Mangusan, Vice Chair of the Committee on Indigenous Peoples' Concerns of the Cordillera Regional Development Council. I will serve as your moderator for this, for this webinar series. So, apat na Wednesdays po tayo magkasama. Today is the first, and then the next Wednesdays of um, October we with different speakers and different topics, of course. The conduct of this webinar series was agreed upon during the first quarter meeting of the CIPC held on February 18, 2020, in response to the observation that issues on cultural misrepresentation, cultural appropriation, and commodification of culture often come up during CIPC meetings. Instead of simply recording these reports and discussing the issues among committee members, the CIPC thought it should hold a regional forum this October, for these concerns can be examined by a multi-sectoral gathering. The activity was seen as a venue for encouraging public discussion of issues besetting indigenous peoples. Led by capable resource speakers, these discussions were meant to enable a rich understanding of these issues, and the result was projected to feed into policy recommendations by the, the committee, the CIPC, to adequately address these concerns. Unfortunately, the original design of the activity had to be modified in view of restrictions brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. The national and local government now promote intensified health and safety measures to eliminate further causes of infection. With mass gathering disallowed under the, these safety measures, this activity can only be carried out through a virtual platform at this time. Despite a remote mode of delivery, we, deliver, we believe that the original intent of the activity can still be achieved because virtual technology facilitates a synchronous, albeit remote, meeting of many participants and it allows real time and exchange of ideas. The recordings of the webinar series, which will be archived online, may also be used as accessible resources for further engagements in the issues that are tackled. At a large, the Philippine and Regional Development Plan framework, the promotion of culture and values is one of the strategies under the major pillar, Malasakit, or enhancing the social fabric. RDP 2017 to 2022, 
or the Regional Development Plan, supports the role of culture and values in enhancing social cohesion, including an inclusion and equity as this is allied to the region's aim to preserve its unique culture and heritage while it, per it pursues development. By encouraging the discussion of concerns related to culture and its entanglement with contemporary conditions, this activity is in line with the above vision of social cohesion and cultural development. Moreover, the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues, UNPFII 2020 session theme is Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions, the Role of Indigenous Peoples in Implementing Sustainable Development Goal 16. This activity promotes the involvement of indigenous peoples in thinking about and acting on the issues that affect their community. Instead of being mere recipients of decisions, indigenous peoples are motivated to actively listen to of concerns that have real effects in their lives. It is through such participation that indigenous peoples are able to help build strong institutions. The webinar series titled IP Rights, Cultural Innovation and Autonomy has four parts aired every Wednesday of October in celebration of Indigenous Peoples Month. And the 23rd anniversary the 23rd anniversary of the enforcement of the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act. This morning, we are having the first web webinars in the series. We welcome all participants for joining us through various platforms. For the format of our webinar, we will first listen to the presentation of our resource speaker, which will be followed by an open forum for, for, for participating Zoom via Zoom, Please use the chat room function to send your questions or use the raise hand feature and wait for the moderator to acknowledge you. There, there may be a queue in asking questions, so we request everyone's patience, patience. To enable wide participation among attendees, we request those who will ask questions to be brief and direct to the point. We also request all Zoom participants to mute their audio and only unmute when acknowledged to ask a question. For participants joining through Facebook Live, please send your thoughts or questions through a comment on NEDA Cordillera Facebook account. So today with, um, we shall now proceed for our first webinar with our first speaker. Here to deliver the first lecture in the webinar series organized by the Committee on Indigenous Peoples' Concerns in celebration of uh, Indigenous Peoples' Month 2020 is Dr. Raymond D. Robilios. He is a professor of history at the Department of History and Philosophy, College of Social Sciences, University of the Philippines, Baguio. He has been the Chancellor of UP Baguio from 2012 to present. Before becoming the Chancellor, he was Dean of the College of Social Sciences of UP Baguio from 2006 to 2012. Dr. Robilius is a well-published author of academic works related to ethno-history and identity politics among indigenous people. Some of his works published especially relevant to this webinar topic, topic are Constructing the Boundaries of Places, Spaces and Identities in Abra, in the Cordillera Review Journal of uh, Philippine Culture and Society in 2016. The devel Development, Power, and Identity Politics in the Philippines in the Politics of Resource e Extraction, Indigenous Peoples, Corporations, and the State published by Palgrave Macmillan in 2012. Uh, number three is writing ethno history in the Philippines, narrating the theory narrating and theorizing culture in the Journal of History. 
Philippine ethnohistories, the Luzon Cordillera, and beyond in 2009. Dr. Rubilius also presented papers in national and international conferences pertinent to identity, politics, especially in the construction and representation of cultural identities, such as inclusive development in cultural identities, inaugural -like lecture at the launching of the PhD in development studies at UP Mindanao held in September 2015, Paradox, paradox of Identity Politics, Rights and Power at the UP Centennial Lecture on the Regulation of Our Identities, Indigenous Peoples, and the Enigma of Le Legal Representation, UP Diliman in October 20, 2008. Dr. Rebilio served as team leader, lecturer, trainer, evaluator, and other various capacities to strengthen the University of the Philippines culture of research and public service, as well as supporting other state universities and government agencies in the country. Dr. Rebilios is actively engaged in leading multi-sectoral organizations to inform public policy and local governance, most notably in the city of Baguio. He is the chairman of the Baguio We Want Movement, a broad multi-sectoral coalition of CSOs advocating for sustainable development of Baguio City and the Blist area from February 2014 to present. He is governing is a governing board member of the Baguio Crafts and Arts Collective and lead author and organizer in the application of Baguio City as a UNESCO creative city from May to October 2017. For his academic leadership and civil civic engagements, Dr. Ravilius received various Recognitions, for instance, the 2014 Outstanding Alumnus Award in Excellence in Tertiary Education Management from the Baguio City National High School Alumni Association, the 2013 Award for Outstanding Contribution to Education during the Fourth Asia's Best B School Awards presented by the World Education Congress in July 2013 in Singapore and the 2012 UP International Publication Award for Publication, the Development, Power, and Identity Politics in the Philippines. So to speak on the topic contextualizing cultural misrepresentation, please welcome Dr. Ro Raymond D. Robilios. Thank you, hi, Ryan. Thank you very much for that lengthy, generous introduction. Uh, na imbag uh, bigat tayo amin, uh, Cordillera region, and the nation, and even the world, I think, is watching, watching uh, this morning. I was given a very challenging topic because I know the issue of cultural representation continues to be a controversial and even emotional uh, issue uh, up until now, okay? But um, yeah, I, I, I'm taking the challenge and I hope that you will engage me uh, in a discussion later on if I said something uh, that is not uh, correct or that is not sensitive to the cultures of indigenous people, especially in the Cordillera region. Okay, let me start by showing some uh, images uh, depicting uh, the Igorots or the Cordillera people uh, uh, as follows, okay? So here is a grade four textbook, 2018 publication, uh, which uh, states that sabi, ang hagdang-hagdang palayan sa Ifugao na makikita sa herehiyon ng Ilocos mga talampas ng bukid doon sa riyon ng Hilagang Mindanao at maging mga lambak uh, tulad. Okay. So this book states that Banawe Rice Terraces of Ifugao are in Ilocos region. Okay? So there's, there's an error there already. A misrepresentation of fact. Next slide, please. Another slide, uh, another Example of misrepresentation of Igorots in official DepEd textbooks uh, has this, no? uh, introducing si Gambo uh, na isang Igorot. No? Pero siya, siya ay nakatira sa Zambales uh, 
at mahilig maglaro kasama ang kanyang mga kaibigan. Ano ang mali rito na si Gambo ay isang igorot? Tama yon pero ang mali ay siya ay nasa sambales. Unbelievable na meron pa ganitong klaseng uh, grave error no? sa depth-ed books na nababasa ng uh, milyon-milyong uh, mga estudyante sa buong Pilipinas. Next slide, please. Uh, ito naman is an Ilocano K-12 textbook uh, which says that the indigenous groups in the Philippines uh, that are Igorots live in the mountains of Ilocos Sur, Ilocos Norte, La Union, and Pangasinan. Okay? And that furthermore, that further, uh, the Igorots in the Cordillera administrative region are found in a place called Italia. Saan ang Italia dito? Meron ba Italia dito sa Cordillera? Did I miss anything from my geography? Okay. So this is a gross uh, error, a uh, factual error no? found in our textbooks. Next slide. Okay. So these images that I showed you uh, are examples of cultural misrepresentation due to ignorance or lack of cultural knowledge. Okay? Um, and this is something that we can correct. Okay? Uh, easier because we can revise textbooks. We can, although it's very expensive to do that, but uh, an error of Omission, okay, is, I think, more, for, more forgivable than an error of commission, okay, which is what is going to uh, follow. Uh, the more dangerous, I think, and the more insidious, dangerous, and uh, uh, form of representation or misrepresentation is one that is more uh, substantive and deeply rooted, uh, and uh, because they are uh, dealing with uh, more no, uh, culture, supposedly cultural based and presented as factual uh, and taken for granted as true because uh, they have been entrenched in our uh, educational and cultural institutions and even government policies. Let me give you an example of this. So you have here an Igorot, a blog about the Igorot. Uh, ang sabi dito, oh, uh, I quote natin, uh, is he an Igorot? That's why he doesn't understand the importance of paperwork and time. I started to guess, baka nga Igorot eto. I don't have any goat or hen to pay him if he doesn't want money. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So uh, here, Igorot is used as a term to mean backward, low to understand, and ignorant. Okay, next. Uh, ito naman is a private conversation uh, in a messenger uh, showing persistent stereotypes about Igorot people. Tingin mo bagay sa akin magpakulot? Wow, magmumukha kang Igorot. Ha, 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 ha. Di ko kinaya yung Igorot. Ha, 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 ha. Pango, maitim kulot. Okay. Um, next slide. Uh, this one is a public Facebook post after Filipino comedian and actor Arvin Jimenez or Tado uh, uh, his death uh, in a bus in a bus crash of a road in Sitio Paggang, Talubin, Abontok Mountain Province. May mga igrots pala sa Facebook. Buti naman may computer na sa mountains. Aha. Magpapabalita na nga kayo sa Magpapabalita na nga kayo sa pagkamatay pa ni Idol Tado. Buti naman, di nyo kinain ang katawan niya. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So, uh, again, this poster describes the Igorot as technologically backward and even cannibalistic. Next slide. Another example from a K-12 textbook, this time for the grade 1 level, uh, 20. Uh, 
a quiz question asked what a person whose parents are from the Cordillera would look. Okay. Kapwa Pilipino mula sa bulubunduki ng Cordillera ang nanay at tatay ni Beno. Siya ay A, maitim at ma... Maliit at maitim, matangkad at maputi, matangkad at madilaw. Ma okay. So the stereotype, uh, the stereotypical representation or caricature of uh, uh, indigenous peoples in the Cordillera are reproduced in these textbooks. Next slide. And uh, finally, you have this comment from uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Up when he uh, she took over the office of uh, Sani, uh, no sorry, uh, Trejanes, he said, um, si, "Siguro magpapatawag na lang ako ng igurot namin dahil kailangan basbasan itong office room." Si, si Senator Trejanes yata ang na, nabunot eh. Okay, so uh, you know, in, in the, um, here you. Eagles are, as, uh, eagles are represented as uh, something that they can own. Igorots namin, no? Okay, objectified and caricatured as shamans. Okay, uh, that can bless supposedly uh, um, rooms that are uh, well, uh, that need to be blessed. Okay. Now, this, these images. Next slide. These images are examples of cultural misrepresentations due to ethnocentrism, chauvinism, and discrimination, obviously. Uh, ethnocentrism is uh, defined as uh, the act of judging a culture based on the values and norms of another culture. Okay, so parang I will judge Akan Kanaay from my point of view as a, as a Tagalog and not from the point of view of the Akan Kanaay or Akan Kanaay himself or his, herself. And um, especially if it is the judgment is one of superiority, inferiority relationship that I am more if, if, uh, superior as a Tagalog I am describing that is ethnocentrism. Chauvinism, on the other hand, is defined as, uh, how do you call this? Uh, it's also similar to ethnocentrism, but this is bigger on a national scale, okay? The dominant uh, ethnicity at the national level or the majority people at the national level uh, look at the other or look at the indigenous groups or minorities as inferior, okay? As inferior to the dominant ethnicity. That is chauvinism. And discrimination is uh, making judgments or discriminating other people or ethnicities on the basis of the ethnicity, okay? That's discrimination. You know, people say, Ah, backward ka kasi igorot ka. Ah, uh, mahina utak mo dahil igorot ka. That is discrimination because you are making a value judgment on that person based on his or her ethnicity and that, uh, and that is uh, based on uh, biases no? about the other or the, about the person being described as inferior. Okay. Next, next slide, please. Now, this form of misrepresentation, as I said, is more dangerous because they are based on meanings or significations. Pagpapakahulugan sa Tagalog, no? Pagbibigay ng kahulugan or, uh, or interpretation or interpretation about other groups. In this case, mostly indigenous uh, peoples, okay? Uh, you, you, we have... In other words, they are constructed, no? Uh, they are uh, presented no? as this and that, okay? They are, and, and this, this uh, 
uh, meanings or significations or interpretations about uh, indigenous peoples are taken as truth, okay? Nagiging katotohanan dahil sila ay paulit-ulit na itinuturo natin sa mga kabataan mula pa nung kindergarten sila hanggang sa maging koleyo sila. So they are also deeply rooted in history and institutions. As a historian, uh, while looking at these examples of uh, misrepresentations which were given to me by the research assistants at the Cornell Center, I just gave them an instruction. Just give me examples of misrepresentations. I did not give them any specific instructions. And uh, uh, our research assistants, I would like to acknowledge them, by the way, Karin uh, Bangsoy, and I think also uh, si Paula Pamintuan, our research uh, associate, gave me images no, from their own uh, no, research. And then I, 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 I read them, and it's, it's as if reading colonial documents over again. And that really uh, unsettled me, disturbed me, because the description of indigenous peoples in the Cordillera, the Igorots, as cannibals, as dirty, as uh, mahina utak, this had always been the content of colonial representations through ethnographies, mission reports, travel reports, photographs, no, from the time uh, of, of Spanish colonialism, American colonialism, and even post after independence. And it's continuing. And um, it's, it's really bothersome. Now we have to do something about this. So let me just uh, bring you back then to history, okay? Because as I said, malalime eh, yung hugot nito, yung pinanggagalingan ng uh, misrepresentation, it dates back to history uh, and it's reproduced by our cultural institutions, including educational institutions. Now, uh, when you say contextualizing misrepresentation, no, how do we understand, how do we make sense of uh, these uh, examples of misrepresentation? We look at power and power relations, okay? Um, who has the power to represent? No? Who takes the photos? Who writes about the indigenous peoples? Who makes films about indigenous peoples? Who publishes these textbooks about the indigenous peoples? These are all power laden. No? Even as academics, when we do research among indigenous peoples, we go there with our educational background, we come from the universities, we go to the, uh, there is power between us and our respondents. And uh, therefore, power is everywhere. No? You cannot, um, especially with the issue of representation, central to this issue is sino ang bay kapangyarinahan? No? Who, has the represent, who has the power to talk about oneself? Okay, to represent themselves no? through these institutions. Obviously, it's the privilege, those who have power, those who have uh, access to this uh, powers, uh, uh, institutional uh, uh, of authority, no? uh, whether political or cultural authority. Uh, another factor is when we analyze misrepresentation, we, have, we can uh, study them in the context of the prevailing uh, theories of change or uh, ideology or cultural theory or ideas, no? For example, social Darwinism uh, during the time of, uh, during colonial period, which I will explain briefly later on. We can also analyze them in the, in the context of why, no, but why were they presented that way? Is it uh, related to the colonizing and the civiliz civilizing project of the colonizers? Uh, and later on by the nation state, no, that, uh, uh, oh, look at this savage, Igoros. we need to modernize them. We need to assimilate them to the nation state. We need to uh, Christianize them uh, as part of the colonial project no, 
of assimilation and, uh, of course, subjugation and control of indigenous peoples. And finally, um, this, uh, a lot of scholars, post-colonial scholars, have already analyzed that this uh, re representation of other, no? the othering of indigenous peoples no? is actually um, due to the fact that the European self at that time was also not stable. It was not, uh, uh, it, the, nas the nation states, they were also still in the process of becoming nations. And so they needed an other to establish and to reinforce themselves. No? So uh, they needed, they, 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 they represented uh, others as this and that because they wanted to affirm to become more secure about themselves, actually. Okay? Because they were also anxious about their own identities. Okay? So that's, uh, to me, should, will be the factors to consider to contextualize uh, misrepresentation. Okay, let me give you now examples of this through briefly through history and up to now. Next slide. Okay, uh, I, I have three examples of misrepresentation in or, in or through history. Colonial narratives, narratives of nation or nation building, and narratives of resistance and human agency. Okay. Uh, or uh, self-representation. Okay, uh, briefly lang ito, no? because I'm not really talking about, this is a whole topic in itself, right? Uh, we talk about this uh, for one semester in the university, okay? Uh, for, okay, uh, throwback, a colon a Spanish colonial period. We know that, uh, we know already because of William Henry Scott and other scholars that Igorot means, it really means people who live in the mountain, diba? That is a, a term being used by the Ilocanos to refer to, to people who live in the hills. So, Igorod, actually, Igorod. So it did not, it, it was a, it was a simple uh, def, this, the, the, uh, label given to uh, people who live in a particular place, diba? But when the uh, colonizers, the Spaniards came, they came in the Cordillera searching for what? For the gold. They have always uh, been desirable, uh, desirous no? of coming to the Cordillera because they learned about the rich resources here, especially gold. But of course we know that they, had, they were not successful because of the fierce resistance of indigenous peoples of the, of the Cordillera, okay. And because they were really parang uh, of the Spaniards, they were Pasaway, no? They, could, they, they refused to be colonized. They were labeled, no? Uh, the Igorot had a different meaning, no? In their, in their description, in their government reports, in their uh, uh, ethnographies, no, in their travel reports, no, the 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 Igorot. If you look at all these voluminous colonial documents, you will you will find the terms salvajes. You see, being salvajes meaning savages, and you know that salvaje became a Tagalog term for salvaje, which means bad. Okay, so. Well, actually, savages is a, an anthropological term at that time, which was really um, referring to a group of people going through a th transition from, a, a co uh, from primitive to barbarian to sa savages, eventually becoming uh, civilized. So that's the uni unilinear evolution um, uh, 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 theory of change at that time. As a uh, popularized by uh, social Darwinism. Okay. Now, in other words, from a very neutral, a non-discriminatory term, igorot, igorot, people from the mountain, nag nagbago ang meaning, ang representation at signification ng mga igorot. Naging salvahe sila, bad. Naging infiel sila, or uh, uh, infiel means 
um, non-believers, no? Um, and they, they became feroces, no? Fierce in the document. So, um, that, that, that term became derogatory in other words. That's, that's when uh, that the terms, I think, I think we can move to the next slide. I'm talking about, in the, it's in the next slide now, okay. So, um, you, you, th these documents, these this, uh, ethno-colonial documents are also replete with descriptions of indigenous peoples in the Cordillera as dirty, cannibals, okay, feroces, fierce, wild, and tribus independientes. So, ito siguro mas positive kasi talagang freedom, they had freedom, eh. they were free. They were free for, for, for more than for 350 years of colonial uh, rule. They refused to be colonized by the, the Spaniards, maybe uh, with the exception of the, the Ab Abra Valley, no? uh, some parts of Abra, uh, which uh, eventually became uh, under the control of the, the Spaniards. So you see, this dates back to that, no? this kind of representation. At, um, in other words, if you look at the documents, Igorot means um, really bad. No? Uh, they are enemies. No? So in other words, they were demonized no? by the Spanish uh, colonial government. And these kinds of description, these kinds of representation about indigenous peoples in the Cordillera were preached among the lowland peoples in the churches, in the schools, and even in, uh, in, in, in the written documents. So it became truth. It became factual. You know? It became facts as, as far as the dominant majority was concerned. So no wonder up to now, this kind of uh, biases continue, okay? And we have not really uh, um, totally eradicated them, okay? Uh, this, these kinds of misrepresentations would continue up until the American colonial period, okay? Um, because of also, because of the same project of civilizing, no? The, 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 the egros. But the only advantage maybe among the Americans is that they were more systematic in really understanding the cultures of the indigenous peoples in the Cordillera. They, they sent no, uh, scholars from the universities, top universities in the U.S., no? like UC Berkeley, um, uh, University of California, um, uh, Berkeley and um, Stan even Stanford, ganyan. So you have ethnographers like Moss for Abra, no? I for for uh, for, for the Ibaloys in Benguet, si, si Moss, no? So you have um, uh, these ethnographers who really studied the culture of the Cordillera, and so they were better able, I think, to socially engineer, no, the culture. Uh, so that they were really perceived as benevolent uh, uh, colonizers. Okay? That they, they came and uh, they, they work within the context of the culture and, of course, tried to change society and culture in the Cordillera through knowledge no? of the culture of the peoples in the Cordillera. But the representation did not change. No? If you look at... Um, the textbooks that they wrote, the newspapers, the, 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 the St. Louis Exposition, of course, of 1904, they were still presented as savages, evolving from uh, being primitives to barbarians to savages. Um, and uh, eventually, uh, in, in the exposition, the, 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 the pinnacle of progress of, is, of course, the Western or in this case, American civilization. Because at that time, social Darwinism, which is a fury of change and cultural change, was the dominant uh, belief or um, explanation of social change no? at that time. Okay. Next slide. Now, 
did the situation change when became, we became dependent? No. Now let's proceed to the nationalist or nation status narratives. Okay. Alam na, if you look at the brains of the nation, no, the likes of um, si Jose Rizal mismo, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, the, the Illustrados, okay, those who imagined a nation, those who conceived that there is a Filipino nation. Actually, they were influenced by the idea of a nation from Europe, okay, the European concept of nation and state, okay. And how is that defined? That it is modern, it is secular, not, ecclesi not ecclesiastical or ecclesial. It is rational, not superstitious, and scientific, not also superstitious, based on uh, superstitious, okay, or superstitious beliefs. Okay, it is science uh, uh, based. Okay, um, therefore, in in the imagination of the illustrados, in fact, they also did not agree that the Igorots and other indigenous peoples in the country were not Filipinos, okay? Especially initially, in, the, in their initial imagination. Now, how is this manifested? You know, even before the 1904 St. Louis Exposition, Igorots, especially from Central Cordillera and Abra, were displayed also in an Exposición General de Madrid and, and Barcelona in... Um, 18 in the in the in the 19th century okay uh, it i think it was in um 18, 9, 1888 that period okay uh, when the the igorots were also displayed no uh, alongside the the vivos animales or the live animals okay so the way that they narrated that they curated the exposition was okay you have the flora and the fauna no, of the Cordillera, and then followed by the Igorots, especially the, 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 the feroces Igorots, and then followed by the, by the Tingyas because they believed that the Tingyas were more, you know, were not, not, no longer uh, uh, savages, they were noble savages, they were on the way uh, to becoming civilized, and then followed by the Ilocanos and the Visayans and the Tagalogs. And especially, and of course, at the end of the journey is the are the Europeans, especially the, the Spaniards, who were the ultimate, okay, uh, representation of civilization. In other words, uh, and how did the propagand propagandists react to that? They said, oh, this is shameful. This is shaming us, no? Uh, they were writing this, I read the, 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 the writings of Marcelo H. Villar and even Jose Rizal who said that this, this, um, this exposition is shaming Filipinos because these egos uh, do not represent us. No, why? Because they say, in other words, they, they, they believe that they are not a true representations of Filipino-ness because Filipino-ness at that time means almost like Euro being European, okay? Diba? Nakatoksido, nakamustache, naglalaro ng spada, nags nagsasalita ng Spanyol, uh, almost like the image of the Europeans. In other words, the, those who did not fit into that image were not Filipinos. And this kind of, uh, 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 of belief would continue even with great leaders like Car Carlos P. Romulo, who said that the Filipino, the Igorots are not Filipinos, right? Was he the same guy who said that Fili the Igorots had tails? Diba? And then, of course, the infamous statement of Ferdinand Marcos, who said, when he was trying to push that Chico River project in, the, in Central Cordillera, said, who said that the minority should, should sacrifice for the majority. Even if they are inundated by the dams, even if they're displaced from, from their ancestral domains, they should sacrifice because these dams are for national development, for nationhood, okay? So, even nationalism or nation state building has not been good for the indigenous peoples in general, okay? And uh, of course, um, 
there were also efforts towards trying to really generally assimilate them. The general policy of nation states from post-independence, even up to now, in fact, is one of assimilation in the context of the national culture of the, na of the dominant nation uh, state or na national culture, not, still not based on multiculturalism or respect for diversity, but one of embracing the dominant culture and assimilating into that dominant culture. Now, next. Uh, and then I, of course, I think we also have to recognize and acknowledge that indigenous peoples are not always victims of history. That even in, while this were happening, indigenous peoples were asserting themselves agency or in the, that's an academic term, which means that uh, people have the capacity to react. They are not passive agents of history. They are also active participants in history. And how did they, uh, how did they uh, uh, show uh, human agency or their participation in history? Several, so we can cite for, uh, for, for, as examples, resistance, of course, as a form of human agency, accommodation, uh, because uh, through colonialism and interaction with other groups no, uh, outside of the region, of course, the indigenous peoples themselves, the Igorots, or other groups in the Cordillera had been adapting elements of culture from the lowland and even Western culture and uh, uh, embraced them as part of their own, in, uh, part of their culture, within the context of their culture, made sense of it, made use of it in the context of their own uh, culture. Um, localization, okay, as an example. Okay, we need to say you have, you have, you have global and national, okay, uh, 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 cultures. Uh, the indigenous peoples uh, have also uh, uh, tried to localize them, no? And made them part of their uh, culture and society. Even labels, for example, diba? Okay, they have been called several names, no? By the national government, no? From, from tribals, no? To national minorities, to uh, now indigenous peoples, IPs, okay? And even the term Igorot, no? Uh, the indigenous peoples themselves have tried to reclaim them, no? Although these are labels that they, they, they did not create themselves, no? Uh, using the human agency, the indigenous peoples have appropriated or used these terms and, 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 break, and reclaim them for their own benefit, for their own use. We also uh, have examples of self-representation, indigenous peoples representing themselves through various media and through self-determination. So I think this clamor for autonomy, for example, and self-determination is a very concrete way of showing indigenous agency or human agency that indigenous peoples have the power to act upon their situation and change their situation for the better, like any other people, like any other individuals. Okay, uh, we, I have a slide here showing examples of indigenous self-representation, okay? Uh, you have this very famous uh, t-shirt, Igorotak, which became very uh, popular among the indigenous peoples themselves, especially those uh, the Kailians who come home, they, they bring and wear this abroad and they're very proud of it. No? And it, 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 it says there, Igorotak means a statement asserting one's ethnic origin. Okay. Why did this, this create? Uh, uh, one of my students in the graduate program, she, um, Ira Kajogan, did a very good uh, study on, on that, on these t shirts lang, no? and what, uh, how it meant, how it means. Okay. What it means. Next, um, you have self representation of Igorots all over the world, no? and they're proud no? of their being uh, Igorots, even if they're already 
living abroad. Okay, these are um, examples. Next. You also have, uh, you know, um, use of indigenous culture or um, elements of culture through protests, no? like this. No? It's also a form of human agency. Next. These are paintings by our famous uh, Igorot uh, painter, Jordan Mangosan. That's a form of self-representation. And uh, you have films, no? Uh, like these documentary films and independent films uh, uh, growing, uh, showing an increasing um, form of self-representation through the film. Okay. Now, how do we make sense no, of, uh, the, there are a lot of studies already on indigenous self-representation on film, um, on, um, on social media, no, et cetera. But uh, what are the issues no, uh, emerging? Uh, next slide, please. Maybe this is something that we can discuss in the open forum, okay? Uh, Oh, yeah. oh, this is another example, by the way, no, of self-representation. This is uh, Chris Samuel Delphine, uh, who uh, in, uh, insisted, no, who asserted the right, his right to wear bahag no, in the Arnis competition in the recent ASEAN Games. Okay. Next. Now, how do I make sense of uh, issues of self-representation? My own, uh, my own readings and, uh, of, the, of, this, um, of the texts no, that are emerging um, show that there is no singular, no, non-monolithic form of self-representation. Okay? Uh, it's plural. No? no singular way of representing uh, being indigenous or being Igorot. Okay? You cannot box them, na ito lang ako, ito lang ang igorot, ito lang. No, but you can say that uh, an igorot not wearing an indigenous attire is not, no longer igorot. Okay? Uh, and Manila people who say that, ay, pupunta ka sa Baguio, may mga nakabahag pa ba doon? May mga igorot pa ba doon na nakabahag? Eh, kausap niya igorot, igorota na nag-work sa Makati na naka-corporate attire. Does it, does it mean that she is no longer igorot just because She's not wearing uh, tapis, no? So there are, uh, you cannot uh, put people in, in certain rigid uh, boxes. There is also the issue of authenticity. Ryan, uh, si Ryan, at saka si R.D. Mila, and I were discussing this in the office of R.D. Mila before this uh, session. And we were also talking about, what, did, what does it mean but to be authentic? Okay, uh, uh, what does... Uh, Okay, so when, when I wear ba, uh, an apparel that is uh, differently designed already from the original, uh, does it lose its uh, pure um, uh, purpose or meaning? So uh, when, when somebody dances pugi or cha-cha while doing the patong, is that being, uh, um, how do you call this, uh, unauthentic? Okay. Mga ganon. Uh, what about people have, who had already embraced or acculturated non-indigenous cultures? We call this in the academy as hybridity, hybridity of cultures. Cultures that are not pure, cultures that are actually a product of uh, interaction between various cultures, no? hybridity. And then also the issue of uh, exotization or exotization meaning... Um, Yung exotic ba? Na ipapresent mo yung uh, indigenous na exotic yan. Uh, kakaiba, no? Uh, unique, no? Um, parang exotic food, di ba? Parang ganun lang, no? Exotic beauty, si Maris, ganyan, no? Ganun ba? Sorry, joke lang, Maris. Um, so, I mean, yung bang non-indigenous lang ang nag-exoticize ng Igorot or the indigenous peoples themselves uh, do you say guilty or also do self-exoticize? Okay. That's a question that, that, that comes out. And then finally, uh, 
one question that uh, is being asked in, even in the academy is, who can write or speak for the indigenous? Sino lang ba ang pwedeng magsulat, mag-aral, at magsalita para sa indigenous? Ako ba na Tagalog na naipanganak sa Itogon, Benguet, lumaki sa Baguio, pero hindi Igorot? Walang karapatang magsalita para sa Igorot? Okay. Thus, being an automatically guarantee that he or she will write and speak for and on behalf of the indigenous? That's a thought-provoking question, but a study made by our director of the Cordillera Study Center, Dr. Ruth Tindaan, when she looked at uh, in the, uh, films in the vernacular done by the Igoras themselves, concluded that by and large, the, the Igorot self-representation is one of celebration or celebration, celebrating the, the indigenous cultures and asserting uh, and, and uh, celebrating, asserting the indigenous culture. At the same time, she concluded that uh, the dominant ideology, the dominant culture is still there. In other words, even indigenous persons, who even as they speak for indigenous peoples, no matter how highly politicized they are already, may not necessarily have freed themselves of the dominant ideology or the dominant culture. In other words, sabi nga ni ano, sabi nga ni uh, Ed, uh, sabi ni, uh, na isang African writer, I forgot the name, si, um, yung white masks. Oh, that skips me. Anyway, he said that we have to go through a sort of a self-exorcism in a way, you know? uh, and to decolonize ourselves you know, from colonial education to really find and to really be able to articulate and liberate ourselves you know, from the dominant culture and dominant national ideology. So uh, I will end with that. I am sure that uh, has been a provocative discussion. I would let, just like to uh, conclude that um, the issue of representation and misrepresentation will continue, I think. It will not, uh, it will not end after this session or not even uh, a few uh, years from now, which for me is a good thing. This is not a bad thing because the fact that we're debating about it means that the indigenous culture is alive. Because the more worrying scenario is when we stop talking about this. Because we have all been Hollywood assimilated. We have all been homogenized as the same. And we have surrendered our diversity as a region and as a nation. Okay, so I will end with that. Sala salamat. Thank you. Thank you, Chansi. So it is uh, indeed challenge. It's, uh, it is indeed a challenging topic, you know, talking about culture, tradition, being indigenous. Uh, you know, what is right, what is right for me may be wrong to another. So, um, Yon, it was. It's a very good topic. Yon nga, with my, my nine years stay in the mayor's office, past the uh, mayor's office, no attending regional development council meetings, at attending other uh, discussions like this, talagang ang daming, ang daming lumalabas na issues on, on, uh, on culture, on tradition, on being authentic. So it's nice the, the RDC CIPC committee came up with this uh, webinar forum. Yung tama nga si, tama nga si Chansi, uh, at least pinag-uusapan ito. Hindi lang siya nasa shelf. Pinag-uusapan, hindi lang pinag-uusapan sa isang meeting. Minsan kasi na-observe na natin, pinag-uusapan sa isang meeting, it's already, it's just part of the minutes of the meeting. Wala na. It stops there. So at least ngayon, we have this, web, we have this webinar to discuss how we can, how we can um, progress. Yeah. progress yeah. Uh, so tama, you know, while, while discussing these problems, we can go on and on and on, Ryan. But I think I'm, I'm uh, a believer of what needs to be done. Okay, what can we do? 
and there are a lot of things we have been doing actually mm -hmm. and we can still do more yeah yeah of course uh, we think the academy rin, ano? Mm -hmm. uh, also mm -hmm. um for coming up with continuing researches studies mm -hmm. on culture um yon. So at the, and producing producing some of the the reading materials mm -hmm. on on these topics. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So sir, sa maganda yung presentation po niyo, starting with the textbooks, yung mga nasa textbooks ano. Uh, ang ano dito question dito is some of these textbooks are dep ed produced. So how is the wala po bang proofreading kaya or editing? It has been an issue ever since na hindi lang tingnan mo 2016 books pa yata yung iba dito na na, na, na present yeah, recent ano so hindi ba hindi pala sa yung mga nauna so wala ba sa DepEd kaya whose whose job is this kaya sa DepEd? Yeah I think this is something that our colleagues our friends in the audience who are uh, from the DepEd especially national Central Office can uh, answer, no? Uh, I cannot really speak for them. But uh, based on my knowledge, kasi textbook production is business, eh, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, un well, fortunately or unfortunately ba yan? So they are parang, they're always gone by times, no? Uh, timelines, mass production, meeting deadlines. Sometimes without really, uh, uh, you know, going through the motions of verifying and doing further research. So, nasa sacrifice yung substance, mm -hmm. no? So, I think uh, there has to be, I know that there, there used to be, I don't know if there's, there is still one in the DepEd, uh, a desk or a department on IPED or Indigenous People's oh. Education. Um, some of our colleagues had participated in that uh, program of DepEd. Uh, they have, in fact, also produced materials on Indigenous education in the country. But the, these are initiatives, eh? they're not still the mainstream. Mm -hmm. The mainstream publishers are still Phoenix, Aviva, ganyan, ano, mga, mga private uh, uh, institutions. I agree no, that I think, in fact, NCIP, hello, NCIP people <laughs> should help DepEd vet these documents, vet, vet these, uh, these textbooks before they are published, no? Uh, but of course, that will require also some ethnographic uh, expertise inside NCIP. Uh, if they don't have it, then they can consult the academe. They can form, we can form task forces to review uh, these uh, textbooks before they are produced yeah. and circulated. Exactly. Well, government naman po, they can partner, no? DepEd and NCIP before, I know. Um, I think that is to answer also the question of the first question submitted through registration form, no? how do we address cultural misappropriation done in other regions, such as the wrong portrayal of igrots in textbooks used in Cebu? Yun nga yung discussion namin ni yeah. Chansi kanina, yeah. na uh, and it is unfortunate na although we have, the, of course, Department of Education, we have the iPad division, there should still be a strong partnership between DepEd and NCIP, especially, eh, yan, uh, elementary books mga yan eh. I mean, mm. so what? We are starting our, the, the children to learn that of, of, of these uh, wrong ano, descriptions. So it's a huge task because remember we are battling centuries of colonial representation and misrepresentation. But we really have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And DepEd being a powerful uh, institution um, should do something uh, and sustain if they're already doing something sustain uh, uh, these initiatives in uh, towards IP education or your iPad program nila okay uh, which also means that they should get more funding more resources to be able naman to carry out their 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 mandate okay thank you uh, we have the second question so for questions, ano, please um, send your questions through the group chat, sa, sa, sa chat, sa Zoom. From NHA Region 1 and CAR, Chris Mongalini. A point of discussion from some of, kakailia, of my kakailian sinifugao on the term igorot, from igorot meaning, igorot meaning people from the mountains, as opposed from 
Ipugo, which means people from the hills, and where, we, where, where the term Ifugao root came from. Now the question, have there been any discussion or more or, or move from the NCIP and the academe or other fronts to deconstruct the term Igorot and use a more generally representative term such as Cordilleran, et cetera, or use the specific ethnographic linguist tri linguistic tribes such as Ekankanaoy, Ibaloy, or others as more accepted terms of reference. Have there been discussions that the term Igorot does not represent our culturally diverse region? Thank you. Uh, sir, enough? Yeah, it's a continuing discussion. It is a never ending discussion. Mm -hmm. no? um, like like the, the, the Kalingas, they do not want to be called the Kalingas, the Ifugaos, they do not want, I mean, Grots, the Ifugaos, they do not want to be but called. But the interesting the thing, Ryan, is actually identities are negotiated. Eh? Now, in a way, they. Depends, I think, on their situation and their location. Mm -hmm. Like, if you, if, you, if you travel abroad, diba? and if, in, if, you, if you talk to a community of indigenous peoples from the Cordillera, there, diba? The, they tend to represent themselves as one, correct, Igorot, correct. Igorot oh, kami, Igorot, oh. regardless of uh, ethnicity in the Cordillera region. Mm -hmm. Igorot kami, or Igorot Kankanaoy, Igorot Ibaloy, basta Igorot. No, mayroon ng ganyang uh, trend ngayon uh, internationally. But uh, if we talk, uh, if, if, if they talk among themselves here, you know, if we talk among ourselves here, then the, the more uh, primordial identity becomes more, uh, more uh, dominant. Like, uh, kankanaoy ako, okay. ifugaw ako, o ifugaw na kalanguya, ifugaw na ganito. No? Mga, uh, so, um, it's because identities are really fluid, no? Mm -hmm. It's not again cast in stone, no? We we ne we navigate our being Filipino, our being Cordilleran, and our being Kankanaoy fluidly depending on the circumstances. So I don't know if you want to really how do you call this define as in ikahon natin kung ano ang identity or let let it flow no? Uh, mm. as a natural course. No? Yeah. I are, don't know. Happy, it's a decision that we have to make. Yeah. We are happy to note naman po na some, um, well, in general, ma, may mga, the, the Kalingas already, parang open na. Uh, they can be called Igorot. Parang there are small groups. Yeah, of, I think there has, there's, there's has been, there has been a growing sense of collective identity. Yeah. Especially, I would believe, when the Cordillera Administrative Region was established, mm. Uh, and the Indigenous Peoples' Rights Act, no? Because halimbawa, yung kinanta nating hymn kanina, mm. we never sang that before. Yes, yes. In other words, just singing these songs and singing this Cordillera hymn in various schools in the Cordillera already, I think, promotes or develops a, a sense of Cordillera consciousness that was not there before. Mm -hmm. So it's changing now. I would hasten to conclude that there is greater sense of being Cordilleran or being Igorot now than several years ago. Uh -oh. Yeah. Um, other questions? Thank you, sir. Okay. From DNR Mia Batkagan, how are we going to represent the IPs where in the development framework looks at, inclusi as, at in inclusivity where in fact there should be exclusivity for example in resource use? I think me, hello, uh, Mia. Hello, Mia. Yeah. I, we know the <laughs> development studies. So actually, the term inclusivity, inclusivity is one of the most abused term now. Okay? Uh, pag, parang ngayon, parang inclusivity means, okay, lahat tayo sama-sama. Okay? Uh, we include everybody. Uh, that's a very, it, it, that's a simplified definition of it. But, Inclusive development really means that you allow opportunities for everyone, okay, to uh, participate in economic uh, activities. No, you don't restrict their uh, participation to engage business. No, you limit their ability to to access loans to start a business, or you only. Uh, it's not about do privileging only the local aristocrats or the, the local, the, 
the dominant elite in the region or in the province. Um, inclusivity is that, no? Uh, so I don't, I don't know what, what the context of this means, but um, exclusive, um, Mia, ano ibig sabihin ng exclusive development, exclusive use? Uh, resource use, yung exclusive resource use. Um, like for example, private property or private property regimes in the Cordillera or corporate corporate uh, property regimes in the Cordillera like the, uh, the uh, ano na yun? Yung sa forest, Batangan, ba yun? Yung sa Muyong ng Ifugao na corporate yung use. So, yeah, there, there are rules pa rin. There are rules on ownership and use uh, also in the Cordillera region. Okay? But inclusive development uh, means that you allow the marginalized, those who had been excluded in development, to now participate in development. Okay? So that's the general uh, notion of uh, inclusive development. Exclusive. Yung exclusive, parang meron talaga structural uh, limitations. limitations no, na, oh. Oh, if you're a woman, you cannot borrow loan from the mm, bank. Okay, of your okay. the, oh, if you're the, you call this, um, uh, if, you're, if you're a small uh, owner, oh, ganito lang yung ano mo, wala kang title sa lupa, you cannot oh. uh, borrow from land bank. Uh, that's, that's not inclusive development. Okay. Diba? Okay. Uh, kasi you limit okay. participation in business, for example. Okay. Thank you, Miss Mia. I hope uh, your question is answered. <laughs> and we have here, of course, Ma'am Jade Aquino, the former NEDACAR Assistant Regional Director. Hi, Ma'am Jade. Um, do you remember that the RDC, RDC CAR in 2018 did try to correct some of the cultural misrepresentations in books? by asking concerned publishers to make public apology for the mistakes and to correct them. May I know what was the result of that initiative? Uh, this will, I think, be included in the webinar for in our fourth topic that will be on October 28th. Yeah, while, well, of course, um, may we ask NCIP, Baguio? Yeah, kasi I think they, they sila na, yung assignment nila to noon eh. This was asked again in one during the Sora, I think. Kung ano yung ano. Okay. So next from DSWD, Mr. Jason Oberto. With the continuous cultural misrepresentation and commercialization of culture sa mga indigenous peoples, is it... Okay, balik. Is it high time for us... For, or for the committee to ask Congress to pass a law penalizing individuals who continuously discriminate or spreading cultural representation. Is this possible? Thank you. Uh, this is also included in the webinar four. We'll take note of these questions I know, for, the web, for the fourth topic. From Mr. Martin Manodon, the writer of the book published by Phoenix is an individual conclusion without scientific basis or peer-reviewed research. While the extensive stay of Dr. William Scott, a historian from the U.S., came up with his own definition, I as Taga and Gurut as Mountain, in fact, Dr. Scott can fluently speak the dialect and his long stay in Sagada has earned him this in his individual writer's scientific conclusion. Yeah, and so this is uh, oh, tama naman. We, yeah, we, we all know of uh, Dr. William Henry Scott pub and his published books. Hello. We have um, a few of his books, Yuma Stories in Sagada. So, yeah, we agree with this also. Uh, from Mr. Donato Bitog, uh, the, he, Mr. Bitog is the IPMR oh, no, of uh, Hingyon Ifugao. It's been 23 years of IPRA, but our IP ownership rights to our lands are still not recognized. Take, for example, the system of the Ifugaos. It is still covered by PD 705, with such that policies on the use of or access of resources 
from the Muyong are made by the DNR and not by the NCIP. The Batangan system of mountain province and the Lapat system of some parts of Abra and other traditional forest ownership of uh, other tribes in the Cordillera are, I think, not also recognized. How is NCIP addressing this problem? Sir Bitog, we are um, taking note of your question, and it is also included in the fourth topic of the webinar series. And of course, uh, of NCIP is taking note of uh, the question. Um, next, other questions? Um, a question from the, no, from, uh, from the audience. No? Some Cordilleran people create FB groups to introduce or discuss elements of Igorot cultures. How can we utilize them to avoid biases about particular groups of people in Cordillera presented in these FB groups? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Uh, this, this person, uh, although anonymous, acknowledges the power of the social media now. No? And uh, in fact, there are, uh, I know that there are uh, FB pages created by indigenous, by Igorots themselves, whether here and abroad, that really tried, uh, tr uh, tried to, co to correct or um, the misrepresentations of uh, uh, indigenous peoples or Igorots uh, through the social media. So yes, let's engage, uh, use it. Use it as a platform uh, to uh, correct uh, stereotypes or uh, misrepresentations about uh, indigenous peoples. Okay, thank you. Although, napapansin lang, ano, sir, um, minsan sumusobra na rin yata yung, yung other pages on how they, yung, how they put exclusivity sa, sa Igorot uh, or, or Cordillera or indigenous, um, ano natin. I, I agree. Having said that, it would also be good to study, no? to mm. analyze how uh, self-representations are done through social media. No? Yeah, in fact, I, 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 there, there had been a study, the, one of my advisors again, si, uh, si Carmine uh, Daitek Yangot, uh, did a very good uh, seminar paper on Igorot self-representation so, so, through social media no? mm. as her final paper in our graduate program. Okay. So, siguro maganda imbitahin din natin later si uh, shout out kay Carmen Daitek Yangot. Okay. Yeah. yeah, in one of our, in our future, ano siguro, in our future webinars, um, uh, bata, ano, we have Carmen, we have Karin, they are good uh, speakers and researchers also. Okay, so from Genesis de la Peña, Kiblado, is there cultural re misrepresentation when we publish pictures of IPs in their native attires while doing livelihood activities such as farming, fish, or fishing, contrary to actual practice of the IPs? Ito is siguro what... Siguro sa ito yung mga Generally, drawing, well, na, well, diba? na, well, I think I don't I don't think I don't see any anything wrong with that. It's the appropriation, okay? Kasi iba pa yung misappropriation eh, mm -hmm. doon sa misrepresentation. Appropriation is what do you use it for? Misappro cultural misappropriation is using elements of indigenous culture for something that may be exploitative of them, something that is um, not, you know, uh, derogatory, or um, halimbawa, if you use this picture to show the bodies of men and women, and kumbaga, i Going, going, ano sila, parang pornographic, no, yung representation. Ah, mali yun, di ba? Mali, mali yung context o yung purpose nung ginagawa mo. But if your purpose is to describe, to explain the livelihood of indigenous peoples and explain them ethnographically, no, based on ethnographic research, then I don't think that's wrong. I don't see anything because it's about 
cultural understanding. It's about cultural exchange, okay? It is good if it's in the, in the context of cultural understanding and exchange. It is misappropriation if you use it to exploit them, no? And to um, represent that practice in a different context, right? Okay? okay. Uh, so maybe the yeah. sender is siguro ano sa uh, photographer or what? Kasi uh, ito, ito sir yung sa iba. Ito siguro yung mga drawing na photo, ano? Yung parang halimbawa, in, in, in the, yung farming. So parang gusto mo mag-publish ng igurot and farming. And pina, pinadamit mo na lang yung farmer ng uh, attire ng, ano, ng any of the Cordillera. And then pipitsuran mo and then parang, publish it. Kung bagay parang you, you stage, no? you oh, stage the culture. Oh. Drawing yung pizza. Mm, but also a form of caricaturing eh. Oh. Parang uh, gusto mong baguhin yung ima imahe, yung representation mo. Mm. Kasi nga, um, of course, if, you're, if your purpose is to capture the everyday lives of people, then be true to the everyday lives. Don't put them in a stage or don't ask them to wear uh, something else, no? Just because you want them to look differently in your image, no? That's unethical also. Uh, yeah. Uh, and th that topic will also be uh, no, will be uh, addressed further and discussed further in, during the webinar topic two. Uh, the title of our webinar two, which will be next Wednesday, is Delving into Cultural Appropriation. Okay? So, I think, sir, that's it for your topic. Ang ganda, ang daming pwedeng i-discuss, ano? Sa self-representation. Thank you. Ang favorite ko is the self-representation. Uh, Kasi meron pa yung gusto kong ilabas doon na yung there are those na although they take it as a joke pero syempre yung nakakarinig they take, take it seriously yung parents ko lang ang igurot yung mga ganon. Mm -hmm. Kaya yung uh, uh, yung indigenous by penetration mga, yeah, uh, mga joke lang indigenous but, by insertion oo nga <laughs> eh, depende kasi sa context eh kung halimbawa depende kung hag ba close na ba tayo para i-joke mo ako ng ganyan uh, ganun din di ba in ordinary yeah. lives you cannot uh, you cannot publicly but publicly but publicly joke no or uh, use indigenous peoples as a butt of jokes no mm -hmm. uh, Halimbawa, yung, ito, yung, ito yung fiasco ni Pangilinan. Di, mm -mm. No, yung, yung artista, pangalan na noon, si Miss... Si... No. Uh, I forgot. Casey. Si, yes. si, si, Candy. Candy, Candy si, Pangilinan. Diba, si Candy, na yes. she was trying to be... Uh, uh, trying to be funny, yes. which other... The indigenous, the Igorots did not find funny mm -hmm. because she made fun of the, of the Igorots, di ba? Uh, so that's that's uh, that's my uh, in that sense male, no. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you utter words about other people in a in in, in a way put them in a inferior situation or that will hurt their feelings, no, um, is is not good. In other words. This whole issue of discrimination and misrepresentation is also very emotional, very uh, subjective. Mm -hmm. And, and um, we have to acknowledge that. No? In other words, in the, in the academy, we say there is objectivity in subjectivity. Because it may be subjective, but the impact of that subjective opinion is objective, very real. Okay? Very real. It may be perceptions of of the dominant culture about indigenous peoples, perceptions lang yan, hindi totoo, subjective. But we have seen in history that the impact of this, of this subjectivity has been harmful, concrete, and very real no? in the lives of the indigenous peoples. Okay, thank you, Chansi. Uh, that was a uh, very good discussion you know, and very challenging in the topic. So we have a uh, from Sir Philip Tingonong. I think he's Philip. Oh, I thought it was. Comment lang naman. Thank you for the very good comment. Thank you for this critical and awakening seminar. These really are the, this really is the need of these times. More so I, in the area of iPad and context. 
Thank you, Manong thank you, Philip, thank you. or adding Philip, as the case may be. <laughs> so, sir, for your parting shots as we end this um, yeah, first Ryan, webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Neda, for trusting me on this. Um, I am not an Igorot. I am not an indigenous person of the Cordillera, but I'm happy that I am not being bashed. I'm not being attacked for, uh, by our participants. Either you are just very kind or... I'm not, I'm saying the right thing. Thank you very much. Agbiag uh, Cordillera. Agbiag tayo amin. Of course, sir. P sir RR is an igurot by heart naman. With his long years in, in, in Baguio, serving you Baguio, and uh, with his studies, siyempre, he is an igurot by heart. So thank you for, thank you for being our speaker today, sir. Here is a cert, um, of course, Ned, uh, RDC card and the, the, the committee gives, um, the Certificate of Appreciation, uh, and it reads Certificate of Appreciation, the Regional Development Council and Committee on Indigenous Peoples' Concerns presents this certificate to Dr. Raimundo D. Rovillos in appreciation of his contribution as a resource speaker on contextualizing cultural misrepresentation in the webinar series in celebration of the Indigenous Peoples' Month. Given this seventh day of October 2020 in Baguio City, Philippines, signed Maria J Jocelyn Vibernos, Chairperson RDC Car and Governor Province of Abra, and Manuel A. Jaramilla, Chairperson CIPC or and Regional Director NCIP Car. And uh, sir, please accept our simple token of appreciation. Okay, so yon, may mga pahabol na comments. Thank you, Sir RR, proud student here from Sir uh, from NCIP Kevin Fonseca. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone, and uh, see you again in the next webinar, the webinar, the second webinar forum on October's no October 14, same time. Dito rin po sa RDC Hall, and we hope. Um, the same number and more will be will register po sa ating Zoom webinar. And thank you very much. Please keep sharing our invitation and the topics for the next uh, for the next the webinar series. Thank you very much and have a good day. Oh, my goodness, my pastor. Oh, galing. Ayan. Mangan tayo tayo na ron. When?